everyone, what's up? Welcome to my channel. So today's a little bit different video. <laughs> I am gonna show you how I make my vegan Thanksgiving. I've been wanting to make this video for like six years now because I, first of all, love Thanksgiving videos. I love to watch people cook Thanksgiving dinner. I just, it's just mesmerizing to me. It's cozy, I just love it. So I really love Thanksgiving and I am vegan. I've been vegan for six years. So I've had a couple years to now try to perfect my recipes, show you guys like what's, you know, what's really good. Um, I'm gonna show you all those things. I'm gonna show you the tools I use. I found some insane tools. Like here's one for example. Potato peeler, okay? Potato peeler, get one of those. It'll change your life. It will change your life and it's like $17, okay? We're gonna go through all of that today. I'm gonna just show you my recipes. These are a lot of them are just kind of like curated. So um, yeah, I'm gonna show you what I make, show you what I buy and I hope that you enjoy. Leave a like if you like this video and I hope that it helps you in some way if you wanna go vegan this year. Starting this video off, this is just the order of operations that I would personally go in. Start preheating your oven to 450 because we need to start cooking our garden. This is their meatless turkey roast. So it's got stuffing inside of it and then it's just like a little turkey log roll, whatever. And um, it's, it tastes really good. You need to heat it to 450 and it needs to cook, okay? It needs to bake for two hours. So get this one out of the way, make sure, you know, a lot of the things that I cook for Thanksgiving do not require 450 heat. This is like one of the only things that does. So I just wanna get this out of the way while I prep everything else. And this also, what's nice about this, this roast, is that it comes with two packets of gravy, but I actually don't use those because I use something that's even better. It's probably the best thing in this video that I'll show you. This is what I do. I first of all recommend these. These are from Dollar Tree and they're like little foil sheets, which is nice because you're not sitting there cutting, you know, all this stuff. And it's just a good thing to pick up for Thanksgiving. You probably only need like one and it's good for like leftovers too if you want to cover it. Just cut it out of here, okay? And then wrap it with foil. Look, see how nice these little sheets are? So I'm just wrapping it kind of tight like this. And then all you do is you put it in for two hours. <laughs> also known as 120 minutes. The next thing, and I believe this is relatively new, otherwise, well, it's new to me, but I just made this on Halloween, and I made it for people like my husband's parents who are not actually vegan or vegetarian. They're nothing like that, and they loved this. This was a huge hit. So this is the Tofurky plant-based ham style roast, and it comes with an amber ale glaze. Once you get the casing off of the ham, which by the way, it's very hard to get the casing off of this. So either let it thaw out for a little bit or you have to use like pliers or like a knife. And it, I'm telling you, it's just, it'll be a struggle, but you'll get it off eventually. I just did it by myself. So I, I did get it off, but um, it says you need to pour a fourth of a cup of water into the pan. So I'm using this little, it's like a mini Pyrex one made to go into a toaster oven and then you just need to cover the roast. So I'm using another sheet of like foil sheet again. Making sure it's secure. And then we're gonna bring it over to the toaster oven. Okay, so I have my toaster oven. So I'm just gonna place this in here. And it, thankfully it fits, okay. And then you just wanna put it on the bake section for it's you need to put it in 325 and once again you need to put it in for two hours the ham actually needs to go for two hours and 15 minutes and then once it's done you uncover it you pour the glaze over it and you cook it for another 15 minutes so when it's time for that we'll do it but that's why i say you know because that one's 325 this is 450 it's like <laughs> i'm telling you it's just the oven situation is it is difficult around this time of year if you don't have you know, so managing that is pretty much the biggest thing. Good thing we have those going. Now let's prep everything else. This is almost boiling, but I am doing mac and cheese, which is maybe not like a traditional Thanksgiving recipe thing, but I just feel like it's so necessary. <laughs> like it's so necessary. So I am gonna use the um, 
I'm not gonna use elbow. I'm gonna use the cavatappi, or sometimes it's called like celatini, I think. Just like the ones that are like corkscrew, you know, like they look like this. I just feel in my heart that these are cuter and like fancy, like no one's expecting me to do this. And you know, how much does this have to do with the fact that I couldn't find elbow macaroni? Maybe it has something to do with it. But I wanna show you what I'm putting it in because it's cute serveware, so we all know it's how necessary it is. I got these super cute casserole dishes at Walmart of all places. So I'm actually gonna put it in this one. This is from Time and Table at Walmart. My favorite line of cookware. Not sponsored, but I so, like, I so wish it was. But this here, this is what it looks like. So you find it back in like the casserole section. So I got this one, which I said I'm putting my mac and cheese in. And then this one, this bigger one, which I believe is, I'm not sure what the size is, exact size, but this one I'm putting my cat, like green bean casserole in. So I'm very excited. I actually have another one too. This one, which is I think like an eight by eight and it's the medallion like one. So cute. So cute, and it's like stoneware, it's really nice. So another thing that you're gonna need for this mac and cheese is you're going to need butter, which vegan butter tastes exactly the same. It's one of the best, you know, pound for pound dupes that you can find, and you can find this anywhere. And I recommend using vegan butter even if you're not vegan. So this is Earth Balance, this is what it looks like. Around the holidays, I like to buy the sticks because it's good for baking. So if, you're, if you have a recipe, for example, and it says um, that you need like half a cup, okay? Half a cup translates to eight tablespoons, which, which would be this whole stick. So it's nice to kind of measure it out that way and not do like the spread. So I like this because we're gonna need four tablespoons of butter and we're gonna put it in a pan. And then you're also going to need flour. Another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need non-dairy milk. I love this one, this is probably my, my favorite one. I love to cook with this also because this one specifically is very creamy and it doesn't have any weird aftertaste or anything like that. Sometimes you get that with almond milk, it'll be too sweet or something. So this is my favorite because it's really, really creamy and rich. So yeah, I get planted oat, oat milk and I love, I just love it, love it, love it. And I get the um, original one. So on the side here, it says six to eight minutes. So I'm gonna do it for the minimum, which is six because it's gonna bake in the oven. So while that's going, let's start on our, little roux situation. So I'm gonna put this on low heat. We need four tablespoons of butter. So I'm going to, this is four tablespoons, but I'm just gonna break them up so they melt a little bit faster. There's that, that's on low heat right now. I already have measured out four tablespoons of flour. So we'll just keep that off to the side. And we're gonna need four cups of milk. So once all the butter is melted, I'm just gonna add this in slowly. And we'll begin the roux. And then I cook this for about two minutes to get that raw flour taste out. All right, now I'm gonna start adding my milk. So after about six minutes, it'll kind of start to look like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat down or off. I'm just gonna add some salt to this. It's probably gonna need some. And then I'm kind of eyeballing it and then I'm adding some black pepper. So now what we need to do is we need to add our cheese. You can get a uh, big bag of this at Costco actually. So this is Violife cheese. So I'm gonna use about a cup of this. I'm gonna measure, but probably I typically wouldn't measure. So I'm just kinda of eyeball it. Eyeball a cup of it, but um, here's a cup. So I'm gonna first add that. And then I'm gonna add about three fourths of a cup of mozzarella. And this is from Follow Your Heart. You can get this at Walmart. So I'm gonna add that. I'm just gonna add the rest of the bag. That's about three fourths cup. I'm gonna use some of this, but I'm mostly gonna use this for the top. So this is follow your heart cheddar, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. Like I said, 
probably three fourths of a cup, but I'm gonna save most of it for the top because that cheese melts better. And now I'm just gonna whisk it all in. Most people would take it off the heat at this point, and I probably should too, but vegan cheese doesn't like to melt. So I'm gonna leave it on. So it's pretty much come together pretty well. I need to taste it though. This is the point where you'll probably wanna taste it and make sure that it's all good. So here's the consistency, that's pretty good. Pretty good consistency. Pretty good, I'm just gonna add a little bit more salt. I think I could probably fit it in here. I'm just gonna dump in the pasta. It's perfect. Yay. Oh my God, y'all. All right, it's good in there. Now I'm gonna take, like I said, the rest of this Follow Your Heart cheddar, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on the top. It might not melt, but that's just how it goes with vegan cheese a lot of the time. So, I'm used to it. <laughs> so then, now that this is done, this is going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes at, at like 350. So the next thing that we're gonna make is green bean casserole. So I actually got this recipe when I was searching vegan Thanksgiving and I got it from someone named, a YouTuber named Kalel. Another thing too, by the way, that I just wanna mention, mac and cheese and green bean casserole could probably be prepared the night before. Here is what we need to do first. We need to start chopping some things. So I have an onion, you're going to need some mushrooms. You'll need like the whole thing of this. And then you'll need to, we're gonna cut a head of cauliflower too. So I'm gonna start with the onion and just get that out of the way. And we just need to dice this. Cool, we got our onion. And for some reason that one didn't even make me tear up even a little bit, so I'm excited about that. Now mushrooms are a little bit more difficult to cut. Just chop them the best I can. So this is my big pile. Now we need to cut the cauliflower. So we have everything chopped up for the green bean casserole. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're making the cream of mushroom soup. Usually people will buy it like in a can. If you're following French's traditional recipe, usually you find it in a can. So what I did is I chopped up all of this cauliflower, the whole head, and I chopped it up into kind of like uniform pieces. So I'm gonna put the whole head in there, okay? And then I'm taking, once again, my planet oat. Probably do like two cups of that. And just so it coats, I'll show you in a second, hold on. And then to add a little bit of richness, cause it's cream of mushroom, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this um, ripple, half and half. I think that Silk came out with like a soy creamer also, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of that to thicken it. So I'm gonna turn this heat up to like medium high, so I have it on six, and then this is what it looks like inside of the, uh, inside of here, okay? So it's just barely coating the bottom. So now that I have this going, I'm gonna add my seasoning. So I have, and I just eyeball these, like honestly, I just eyeball it. So. I'm doing a lot of garlic, okay? So that's garlic powder. And then I do um, minced onion. Oh my God, all my seasonings like get all coagulate. Like look at this, it's like a rock in there. I'm gonna add a lot of onion powder. I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika. I'm gonna obviously add black pepper, of course. I'm gonna do a little bit of seasoned salt. So soup has a ton of sodium. That's the hallmark of soup. So I'm gonna add in a lot. I mean a lot of salt. Like more than you even think you need. And then there's gonna be another opportunity to taste this, but for now, I'm gonna mix it up and then we are just gonna let this sit for about probably 10 or 15 minutes and then you'll know because these will be really soft and like kind of mushier and easy. You'll know, okay, you'll know. Cause right now they're like rock hard. 
So you'll know, and I'm gonna cover this as well, and I'm just gonna let that sit, and then probably 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna blend this, okay? So this is about done. They're pretty, like, mushy, as you can see. So that is what they look like. So now I'm gonna transfer them into the blender, okay? Good. Just needs to be blended more. Add a teeny bit more salt, if you can believe it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay. So honestly, I probably put a little bit too much liquid in there, but it should be fine. And now let's move on to cooking the mushrooms and the onions. Preheated the oven to 360-ish. So I'm just gonna put the mac and cheese in now. And I'm gonna do it for, I'll do 20 minutes to start, but it'll probably be 25. And then this just came out of the oven, the turkey roast, and I'm just gonna let that sit. It needs to sit for a long time. Now for my green bean casserole, I have um, some olive oil in the pan and I'm just going to drop all this in here. And now I'm just gonna let these sweat out. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt just to help everything get like nice and fragrant. I'm gonna sweat these for, uh, I'm gonna put it on like medium heat and I'm gonna sweat them for about probably 10 minutes or so. You'll see, I'll show you what they look like when they're done so you just get a better idea. So you can just go by looks instead of time. But in the meantime, we need to do our green beans. Obviously we need green beans for green bean casserole. So I buy these frozen bags. I buy three of them and I use all three. It doesn't really matter what brand, but I just did this Cascadian Farm cut green beans. I always use frozen. You don't want to use canned. That's the only thing. I believe these are steam bags. Oh no, they're not. Usually what I'll do is I'll buy the steam bags and I'll just kind of undercook them. So if it says like you need to cook them for six minutes, I'll cook them for three in the microwave. Here's what I did. I added them to, I said cover it, so I just put this stupid microwave cover over it. But I added them to this microwave safe casserole dish and I just put all the green, frozen green beans in there, added some water to it till they're semi cooked. These are pretty much almost done. I just wanna see the onions get a little bit more color on them. I'm gonna turn off the heat on here and then I'm gonna add in our cream of mushroom soup just directly in there this right here is what it should look like and I'm just gonna let it sit together I turn the heat off but it's still on the heat so I'm, it's just kind of helping them intermingle once these green beans are done we're gonna combine everything okay so our green beans are mostly cooked they are cooked and then I have my gorgeous pan here. So now I need to mix everything together. So I'm just going to dump the green beans in. Okay, like so. I'm going to take our mixture. Pour it on the top. And then what I'm also going to do, because these are the best, these Frenches. I buy these usually, but this is all they had when I was at um, fresh time. So I'm gonna add a whole can of these and then save a whole can to put on the top of this when I go to cook it. So I'm just gonna add it now because I'm mixing it anyway. All right. I just took the mac and cheese out of the oven so if you'll notice that the cheese is not fully melted on top, but it is like relatively crispy, I it just doesn't like to melt. That's just vegan cheese for you. It doesn't like to melt. But I can still tell that it's very like ooey gooey below this. So this is probably the best that we're gonna get with, with like the topping. You could also do like a breadcrumb topping, which would be cute and would be tasty. So. I'm just gonna let this sit because it just came out, but this is looking pretty good. All right, oven's ready, so I'm gonna put the casserole in. And then, 45 minutes. 
All right, time to take the ham out. So cooked for two hours and 15 minutes. So this smells so good, by the way. It smells so much like ham, it's crazy. So now I'm gonna add this glaze. I'm gonna put this back in, once again, 325 for um, about 15, 20 minutes on the top. And there it is, folks. So next, we're gonna work on the mashed potatoes, and it wouldn't be me if I didn't follow one Ina Garden recipe, at least. So these are Ina Garden's mashed potatoes, and they're very much so like French, style mashed potatoes. So there's not like a ton of ingredients. They're really simple, but they are the best mashed potatoes that I have ever, ever, ever tried. I filled over here a stock pot with water. And as I kind of cut these potatoes and things, I'm gonna drop them in and then I'm gonna start um, boiling them. So here's my little potato station. So I have the called the Rotato Express. I got it on Walmart. I think you can find it on Amazon too, but this is crucial. And then you're just gonna need a bag of Yukon Gold potatoes, okay? Not russet, Yukon Gold. We're gonna use every single potato, by the way. And then you might wanna bring a trash can nearby. Here's what you do to do this uh, potato peeler. I, this is like, seriously, the best thing I ever bought in my life. So you stick it in here, stick it in there pretty good. And then you stick this in there. Okay, stick this part in and then ha make sure that this is at the top. And then you just press, there's a red button over here. Then I take it out, I throw these strings away. This is what the potato looks like. I mean, could you die? So usually what I'll do is I just cut off the parts that it didn't get. We don't really need those parts anyway. So then I cut it in half. I cut it in half again. One, two, three, four. And I just do them all pretty much in like this size and I drop them into the water. Oh, by the way, don't forget to salt that water as well. So now I'm just gonna keep going. This is ready, all of my potatoes are cut, so I'm just gonna turn it on high, and I'm gonna bring this to a boil, and then I'm just gonna watch this. I don't know exactly how much time, but once they, can, a fork can easily go through them, then I'll know they're done. So I'm just gonna keep checking it. It'll probably take like 15 or so minutes, I'm not sure. We're still waiting on the mashed potatoes to be ready, but in the meantime, I've gotten a couple things prepared, like the final things, okay? So here is, of course, the dessert that I always do. I don't try to make my own. This, to me, is the best, like the best, okay? So go out and get this now because you can keep it in your freezer. Marie Callender Dutch Apple Pie. Completely vegan, just has wheat in it. Literally so delish, amazing. Best apple pie there is out there, just saying. So this is what you need to buy. And it comes with this amazing, like, you know, topping or whatever, and it's like cinnamon, sugar, yummies. So you put this on top. So that I'm gonna put in the oven once my casserole is done, and that needs to go in the oven at 400 for 60 minutes. You take it out, put the crumb topping on, and then put it back in for 10 more minutes. So it takes a long time as well, and then it takes a long time to cool down also. This is go like the biggest game changer in Thanksgiving history. And I don't know if this has been out before. I just found this this year. Best gravy I have ever, ever, ever tried. It's the Tofurky plant-based savory gravy. Oh my God, it's so delicious. So basically what you do with this is you can either put it in a saucepan, which I probably should do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the saucepan over medium heat, okay? So I'm just gonna it in there it's kind of gelatinous to be honest with you medium heat and then I'll 
gradually sort of work on that. So that's the gravy. And what I do is, usually people will use like a gravy boat or something like that. I actually put it in the world's cutest container. I put it in here and I can heat this up. This is microwave safe and then it's also oven safe. So I just pop it in the oven and I, that's how I serve it with like a spoon or something or a ladle. While this is still like cooking, these potatoes are still cooking, the recipe calls for, let me see, one and a half cups of whole milk. I'm only gonna do one cup because I always have way too much. Okay, I'll do, well, I'll do one and a fourth. So I'm gonna put it into this little saucepan right here, okay? So you need to do that, and then I'm gonna do just the leftover butter. So in total, we're using a whole stick of butter today. Remember, we used the butter for the, um, what did we use the butter for? I don't even remember. The mac and cheese. So then I'm just gonna put the rest of the stick of butter in there, and let this just come to, like, let it just melt together while this is going on. So I'm gonna put it like four, like, or something like that and I'm just gonna cover it, and I'll just move it, I'll keep moving it around for now. But that needs to be going while this is going. Another thing that you're gonna need for this recipe, you're gonna need pepper, you're gonna need salt, obviously, but you're also gonna need vegan sour cream. So this is my favorite sour cream. It's the Kite Hill brand, it is so delicious. Delicious, delicious. And more places are selling it, like Kroger sells it, Fresh Time Market, Whole Foods. I mean, honestly, what I would probably recommend is just go to Whole Foods, because that's where they have everything, or Fresh Time Market or something like that. And then you're also going to need one of these, like a mixer. This is like an attachment. It's, this was like maybe 15 bucks or something. I got it at Walmart. And it also has an immersion blender attachment that you can put on there, but you will need this on there as well. So those are the tools that you need. Believe it or not, we're almost done with everything. I mean, it is a full day of cooking, but that's what Thanksgiving is. So, you know, I'm not too bothered by it. So here's the situation. All right, so I'm gonna bring these back over here and uh, put them in. So the reason why I'm using like such a tall pot is because this kind of gets crazy if you use anything to kind of lower. So I'm just gonna kind of test the water. So I like this little pot that I have too because it has a little, you can see a spout. So just slowly add, a little bit at a time you add it in. And adding more. Here's what they're looking like, okay? So we need to season them. So I'm just gonna do about two teaspoons of salt, okay? You can do probably half a teaspoon of fresh crack, oh my God, can't speak. Half a teaspoon of fresh cracked pepper. And then we need to add half a cup of sour cream, okay? So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. Do a taste test really quick. Tasting for salt. It's actually pretty good. Done, done, done. I made a really stupid mistake <laughs> that I am gonna leave in because I will think it'll help you. But basically, I wasn't supposed to put the fried onions on top for the whole like 45 minutes. Just so cook it without any fried onions on the actual top of the casserole. And then take it out after 45 minutes and then put these on top, okay? So I'm glad I have another one because they came out like completely burned. So I have another one to save the day. I, pu I pulled off the other ones that were like all burned and things like that. I mean, they weren't that burned, but they just, I definitely wouldn't serve it that way and it made me realize that I had made a mistake. So don't put them on when I put them on, okay? Put them on for the last 10 minutes of it cooking when you, after the 45 minutes, right? But I need to show you that I made a mistake. Well, good thing I had another one. So I'm gonna pop this back in just for 10, 15 minutes or so. And um, probably 10 more, probably 10 minutes actually. And we should be good. The mashed potatoes are done. I just put them in this like oven safe kind of casserole dish. 
and it actually has a lid which is nice this is vintage baby love it but um, it's nice because if right before you can heat it up in the oven again so I have that and then I have the gravy I will say this is so much easier if you like defrost it in a pan so much easier look how good this looks it is literally the most delicious gravy I've ever I don't even like gravy and this is like it tastes like liquid gold so I want to put this in my little dish look at that oh my god wow wow just just ribbons of it there's the gravy and like I said this is also oven safe so if you want to heat it up right before you can another thing I wanted to show you also that I do like as an appetizer and this is another thing I learned in that or I watched in that um, video where I got the green bean casserole recipe she showed this as well but I buy these two blocks of cheese so I kind of do like a charcuterie board a little bit um, or like a little snack plate, but the Daya, this one specifically is so good. And it's just a block of cheese and you cut it up into like cubes. And then I buy like, you know, assorted crackers, just making sure there's no egg or anything in them. I don't know where I got these, maybe Kroger. Another thing I buy, I really like the Eves. It's like salami, the Eves salami, Y-V-E-S salami. That's what I like, I'll put a picture up. And if you can find that, get that. I haven't been able to find it. So what I do is I just get this like pepperoni and this is ready to eat. This is from the brand Sweet Earth and this is good. I like the Eves better. So if you can find like a vegan salami, do that. And I just cut it up into like little pieces and then you assemble like a little cracker thingy that you can snack on while you cook or whatever. And then what I'll do is I buy like olives. I love black olives. So I'll put olives out drain these obviously, refrigerate them because I like them refrigerated. And then you can also buy like little cornichons or I think that's how you say it. Or like those, they're those little teeny little pickles. I really like those. I don't know if it'd be weird to do this. <laughs> these are my favorite pickles. Like these are the only pickles that we'll eat. So putting out like mini pickles would be maybe an idea too. I don't know. But these Clausen pickles are the best for like little appetizer board. Another thing that I love to do, you can also use it for these crackers, is it's called Tree Hill, I think, or Tree Line Farms or something. And it's this little spread. I'll put a picture up of it. It's this like garlic herb spread. And it's like a che vegan cheese spread. So delicious, like it's addicting, okay? If you don't wanna get these entertainment crackers, you can always get club crackers or Ritz crackers or something, so that works too. That's a good little appetizer that I always put out like on Thanksgiving, cause you know, people are like standing around, they're like, when's the food ready? That's what I'm doing now, I'm like, when is this gonna be ready? It's taking so long. Oh my God, we're at the finish line. <laughs> we're at the finish line. So I'm just gonna put the crumb top and then it needs to go on for 10 more minutes and then it's done and then it's done 10 minutes and then we're done so i'm finally done it took me all day <laughs> to do this but before i show you the final spread which you pretty much already know what it looks like. I just wanna say, usually my mother-in-law will make stuffing. My mom has made it before and she just buys the one in the bag that you can get at the grocery store and that one's really good. Um, there's also stuffing inside of that turkey roast. So, you know, but my mother-in-law makes a good one so I don't usually make that. These are usually the dishes that I bring myself and then she brings like a whole other one. We already went over our menu this year so it's been a lot. But all right, I'm gonna show you my final spread i'm very excited all right are you ready i cut it up i put it on this platter which i thrifted this platter but it's it's just martha stewart but i cut it into little you know and then i spread them real nice you know real gorgeous presentation i would like i think what i should do i should get like a like leaves or something like lettuce leaves or Something like a sprig of something to make it look prettier, like parsley or something. I'm not sure. But that's what that looks like. Very gorgeous. We have over here the mac and cheese, which came out kind of decent, besides the fact that the cheese didn't really melt. <laughs> it looks good besides that. In here we have the gravy, which is the star of the show. And I keep saying it over and over, but star of the absolute show in my gorgeous, this is from a store, a local store 
in Ohio called Burlap and Birch. So cute. We have the casserole, which smells so good, besides my mistake that I made, but it looks so good, tastes so good. Amazing, amazing. This is basically the vegan version of the French's original casserole. Then I have obviously my mashed potatoes, which are Ina Garden's mashed potatoes. And then over here I have Marie Callender Dutch apple pie, which is just so delish amazing. It's just such a great little spread. All right, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little different, but leave me a like to encourage me. <laughs> Um, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. I had a lot of fun making this, just even though it took me 45 million hours. I hope that this gave you some inspiration and so maybe led you in the right direction of things that maybe you want to try out this year. It's nice for me, at least, to get a test run in before Thanksgiving and be like, okay, this is what... This is the all-star A-team lineup, you know what I mean? Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Across the room